Hello all, welcome to the presentation on CS361 Soft Computing which is an elective subject for the 5th semester B.Tech Computer Science in Kerala Technological University. I am Jisha Mary Jose, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. In this presentation, we will be discussing the topics of the second module of Soft Computing. The major topics that are discussed in this particular module are supervised learning and out of supervised learning three kinds of uh, neural networks are discussed which are perceptron, adalin and back propagation networks and in this presentation we are going to study in detail about perceptron. After the introduction of the Meccalopitz neuron, the next artificial neural network model that was introduced was Perceptron by Rosenblatt. This particular neural network model basically consists of three units, the sensory unit that is the input unit, the associator unit that is the hidden unit and the response unit that is the output unit. Okay, now the sensory units are connected to the associator units using fixed weight values that is it can be either 1, 0 or minus 1 and it can be assigned at random and these weight values are fixed that is they cannot change whereas the uh, weight values from the associator unit to the response unit can be vary. Okay, now the activation function that is used in between the sensory unit and associator unit is the binary activation function. The rest of the properties we will see in the next slide. The activation for the associator unit is also binary step with fixed threshold that is the output signals from the associator unit to the response unit are binary in nature and the final uh, response unit can also have an activation of 1, 0 or minus 1 and the activation function used here also is binary step with fixed threshold which is shown in this diagram that is f is equal to 1 if the net input is greater than theta, 0 if the net input is between minus theta and theta and minus 1 if y in is less than minus theta and the final output of the perceptron network is given by small letter y which is equal to uh, the net input being applied to the activation function that is f. This is the diagram for the original perceptron network. It is a single layer perceptron model. Here we have the sensory unit, the associator unit and response unit. The sensory unit will contain some sensor grid which represents any pattern which is to be applied to the neural network model and from the sensory unit through some activation inputs that is x1, x2, etc, xn, the pattern will be applied to the first unit that is the associator unit. The associator unit consists of the nodes x1, x2, etc, xn which are the inputs input nodes and the response unit consists of the output nodes y1, y2, etc, ym and the interconnections between the associator unit and response unit are through weighted values that is w11, w21, etc till wn. Okay and from the response unit we can take the final output that is y which is represented as y1, y2, etc, ym and then since perceptron follows supervised learning mechanism there will be already the desired output values that is t1, t2, etc, tn available and then this desired output and the calculated outputs can be compared by the supervisor or the mechanism that is present and then an error factor is calculated and using this error factor the weight values can be adjusted and which are the weight values which are going to be adjusted? The weights between the input nodes and the output nodes that is these uh, terms w11, w21 etc, wnm. So this is the architecture of the original perceptron network. Perceptron learning rule is used for weight updation between associator and response unit. There is no weight updation happening from sensory unit to associator unit. And how is this weight updation happening? For each training input, the network will calculate the output and check for errors. The error is calculated as target output minus calculated output. And the weights on the connections from units that are sending non-zero signals will be adjusted. 
when learning happens or begins in perceptron initially some random values are assigned to the weights and as we perform learning or training in the network the weights get adjusted based on the perceptron learning rule and what is the formula for adjusting the weights the weight new that is wi new can be calculated as wi old plus alpha into t into xi where alpha represents the learning rate which ranges between 0 and 1 and uh, t represents the target value that is plus 1 or minus 1 and xi represents the input activation and if there is any bias involved in the perceptron network that we have created then that bias value can also be updated as b new is equal to b old plus alpha t okay this is how weight adjustment is performed in the learning rule of perceptron and if there is no error uh, when we perform the calculation between uh, target output and calculated output then no weight updation will be done we can stop the training okay this is how weight adjustment is done in perceptron Now let us consider a example of a perceptron network using its architecture. So in this diagram we can see we have the uh, three units that is the input unit initially over here then here we have the associator unit and here we have the response unit. The associator unit consists of components x1, x2, x3, xi, xn and then the response unit consists of a single output neuron y and here we can see there is an extra bias value that is connected to the output neuron uh, whose uh, in input activation is given as x0 its value is 1 and then the weight of that corresponding connection will be the bias value or b and here we have the input uh, activations x1 etc etc okay and the weight values are w1 wi etc w1 and the weights in the input layer will be fixed it will usually be uh, 1 0 or minus 1 and the weights to the output layer are trainable that is w1 wi etc w1 will be trainable and based on that we can calculate the net input in this response unit and using an activation function that is the binary activation function I can calculate the final output which will be y so this is a single classification perceptron network the learning rule that is applied in the original perceptron network can be summarized as consider a finite n number of input training vectors xn and their desired output vectors tn then suppose i am applying this input uh, training vectors to the network and i am calculating the final output from the response unit the final output can be calculated as y is equal to apply the net input to the activation function f which is equal to 1 if the net input is greater than theta 0 if the net input is between minus theta and theta and minus 1 if the net input is less than theta. After applying this uh, activation function and finding out the uh, actual output or the calculated output, the weight updation is done as if y is not equal to t, that is the calculated output y is not equal to the desired output t, then we have to update the uh, non-zero weight values between the associator unit and the response unit as w of mu is equal to w of old plus alpha into t into x where alpha is the learning rate, t is the target output and x is the input activation. Otherwise, if y is equal to t, then w nu, that is a new weight, is the old weight itself. That is, we don't have to update the weight values. This is how. Now, we can formally define the perceptron rule convergence theorem. It states that if there is a weight vector w such that f of xn dot w is equal to t of n, where xn represents the input training vectors and w represents the weight vector. So, I am taking the product of all my input activations and corresponding weight values and the net, that is the net input. That net input is applied to the activation function f that, to get the final output or the calculated output and if that calculated output is equal to t of n where t of n is the uh, desired output for all values of n then for any starting vector w1 the perceptron learning rule will converge to a weight vector that gives the correct response for all existing training patterns and this learning takes place 
with in a finite number of steps provided that the solution exists so what is the meaning if i am starting with a any random weight vector value w1 and if that corresponding product value or that equation is satisfied then the learning rule will converge to a correct weight value such that the desired output and the calculated output will be equal that is the error factor involved will be zero so the learning process can be completed that is the training will be completed this is known as the perceptron rule convergence theorem now let us consider the flow chart for the original perceptron network so we start then we have to initialize the weights and bias values of the network to some random values then set the learning parameter alpha to some random value between 0 and 1 then consider for each s colon t uh, we have to perform the following steps that is first you apply the uh, input units to the corresponding uh, activation terms that is xi is equal to s of i then we have to calculate the net input for that corresponding uh, input that is applied that is y in then apply the activation function to obtain the final output that is y is equal to f of y in now compare the value of y and t where y is the calculated output and t is the desired output and if y is not equal to t then we have to update the weights and the bias values so the updation formula is wy new is equal to wy old plus alpha dot t dot xi and the bias value new is equal to bias value old plus alpha into t and if the values of the calculated output and desired output are equal then we can uh, we don't have to perform any updations that is wy new is equal to wy old and b new is equal to b old and uh, come to the next step that is if there is any changes in the weight yes then we again take the Uh, next uh, pair and we continue these steps again and again and if there is no change in the weights and if the error factor is zero then we can stop so this is how we perform training in perceptron network with a single output these are the algorithmic steps that are used for uh, performing the original perceptron network output uh, calculation that is in step 0 we will initialize the weight and bias values and also the learning rate alpha to some value between uh, 0 and 1 usually it is set as 1 then we have to perform the following steps until the stopping condition is false and what are the following steps uh, for each training pair indicated by s colon t we have to first apply the uh, input layer containing input unit with the identity activation functions that is xi is equal to s of i using the identity activation function i apply the uh, training input si to the xi value then i calculate the output of the network and to calculate the output of the network we use the formula y in is equal to b plus sigma i of xi wi where b is the bias value if bias value is there then that value should also be included for calculating the net input and then this is the product of the input activations and the weight value now using that we will calculate the final output by using the activation function we usually use the binary step with fixed threshold which is indicated over here calculate the final output y now we have to compare the calculated output and desired output if it is not equal then update the weights and the bias values if it is equal no need to update the uh, weights and bias values and train the network until there is no changes happening to the weight weight values and the error factor becomes zero till now we considered the perceptron network with a single output but we can also have the network architecture for perceptron network which is having several output classes so here we have the diagram here we have the input units that is uh, x1 xi etc xn which is coming from the sensory unit then we have the associator unit that is x1 xi etc xn and then there are connections from these to the final response unit that is here we have multiple output classes represented by each uh, node that is y1 y2 etc yj etc ym and the interconnections as shown over here w11 wi1 etc and so on and we also have multiple bias values whose activation value is 1 and the weight values are corresponding bias value so this is how we can also have a network architecture of perceptron with several output classes
Now let us consider the algorithm for finding out the output of a perceptron network with multiple output classes. It is just a generalization of the previous algorithm. The steps remain the same. Initialize the weights, bias and learning rate values. Uh, perform the following steps till the stopping condition is false. Then what are the values to be uh, performed? That is for each bipolar or binary training vector pair S colon T. First apply the training vector input to the input activations Xi. Then calculate the net input y in j for each output class. Then calculate the output yj for each output class using the activation function. Then compare the target output of each output class with the calculated output of each output class and perform the weight updations accordingly. So uh, this is how we can perform the uh, calculation for multiple output classes. It is always best to test the network performance once the training process is complete and for efficient performance of the network it should be trained with more data. So this is the network testing algorithm that we are going to use. The first step is the initialization of weights and the weights will be initialized with the final weight value that I obtained after performing my training and the initial weights are assigned then by considering each input vector x to be classified I will uh, calculate the activations for the input unit and I will obtain the final output of my response unit by using the net input calculation and the final output calculation. Like this we can uh, test the performance of our algorithm. With this, we come to the end of this presentation. So we started our second module of soft computing in this particular lecture and we started discussing about supervised learning and one of the network models that uses supervised learning that is the simple perceptron networks. The rest of the topics that is the Adalin networks and the backpropagation networks will be discussed in the upcoming slides. Thank you.